got mail. You've got mail. You've got mail. All right, all right. Infinistream. This is so cool. All right, we are live. Thank you so much. Um, this is the very first Infinistream, and it looks like we have our good friend Alex in the chat. Say hey um, if you're joining us. Uh, this is our very first Infinistream. Gosh, let's go. Hey, here we are. I have uh, Darian Shields with me today. Hello. How's it going? Man, so I am so pumped. Um, this is the very first Infinistream. And for anybody who's been following me at all uh, for the last little bit, um, you know that I was doing production streams for a while. I stopped. Um, I think I talked a little bit about doing uh, a production stream at the beginning of 2021. And I can't believe that we're already at the end of February of 2022. <laughs> I'm just starting the very first episode. So um, it's uh, it's really exciting to be able to do this. And really like, what's the purpose of Infinistream? So it's, a, it's going to be a production stream uh, that's gonna go over my process as far as like writing songs, um, the actual production process, mixing, mastering, sound design, um, I would love to have more guests like my good friend here, uh, Darian Shields, um, and particularly in the Northwest, uh, uh, especially like I, I want to promote, uh, Northwest artists as much as possible and, um, just connect with artists, help people. Because when I think about like the time before the internet, and the and where I'm at now in terms of my production without YouTube, just YouTube alone has helped me so much in my production. It's like how to mix an album, you know, and then you go down the the rabbit hole of of learning about it. So really, this is a give back to you. Um, and I have decided that I don't want to get um, just like stuck in the perfection of a stream. And I want to focus on like the actual purpose behind it. And that is to help people and it'll get better over time. So like, for example, right now I have Eric with me and we only have one microphone. So I'm in charge of everything he gets to say, or it doesn't say if he doesn't like it, I can just pull it away. But, um, with that said, Darian Shields, I'd love to have, uh, you introduce yourself and just talk a little bit about why you're here. First of all, I'm here because it is a privilege to be in this room right now. Uh, you guys across the webosphere are lucky to tune in, but if you were in the room that I am in right now, you would be very ecstatic because this is every 
amateur or professional musicians like home studio dream right now so uh getting to sit in on this is fucking great um but yeah that's why i'm here as well as obviously our friendship you know that's great too and everything but um anyway yeah so i just want to support this man this beautiful beautiful man and his amazing work and uh yeah basically pitch in however I can in the process learn a lot along the way and I hope that's what everybody else is out there doing too so yeah man so I was just thinking like how did we meet maybe you could tell everyone how we met and just like what was the first you know the first day what was that like and just like I don't know the context of how we started working together on stuff I actually don't think, I don't know if I, we met before this, but I do remember, I think the first interaction we ever had was, you know, virtual. Uh, I DM'd you about your music, which I found on Bandcamp by searching uh, for musicians in Seattle, basically, that played similar stuff to me. And uh, then we put a show together. I think the show was the first time we actually met in person, though, right? So, yeah, um, I remember, I don't know if we did more than one of them, but we did one and that was at, um, Vermilion at least. Um, we had a big bill that was at Substation, but I don't think you were on that one. I think you were at the Vermilion one. So yeah, that would have been the first time I was wearing the original Darien Shields outfit and I felt like I looked like a fucking idiot in front of you and I was like oh man <laughs> this guy thinks I'm such an asshole but yeah uh that was the first time we met so yeah yeah man uh I I still can't believe like when you reached out and you're like your music sounds great would you love to play the show and I was just like I was blown away because that's what I was trying to do at that time and um Oh man, I just remembered the excitement that day of meeting people who knew about Vaporwave. Like that was like the coolest part of all that. I was like, you guys, you actually know about this. Like you know about this stuff. Um, and that's when like, you know, I met some great people that were involved in the Vaporwave community. Um, you know, Sleep Pattern was there that night. Yeah. He told me, <laughs> he told me uh, he, he was he was like he didn't he was I don't know what it was he just didn't want to introduce himself to me I don't know if it was like he said he was intimidated or something and I'm like dude I I feel like I'm the least intimidating person on earth but I get it and now we're good friends um I wish he could have been here tonight he had the family emergency come up and so did Vista Group who I was really hoping we would have like a gang of people here hanging out but we are truly cursed <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like we are because uh god i would love to have more more people in the seattle area involved in vaporwave but they either move away or have family emergencies so it's just it's just a part of life but um yeah so that's how we that's how we met um and when i'm like when i thought thought about like our first time playing together that was so much fun it was such like a a diverse bill of different styles of music too um and you know a friendship grew out of that uh we got to hang out with uh chris which you know r.i.p um and i felt like we all kind of connected through music and um uh the next step in that evolution then was um working on our first song together yeah. which you played like i would say a major part of that um of actually like starting that song and maybe you could talk about that too yeah so i uh i really wanted to work with you and i really wanted to work with michael weber um and i that's the initial i was listening to like starting to listen to a lot of city pop and it, that's not really how the song turned out but um i was starting to listen to a lot of that stuff and then i was like i could make something really cool with Michael Weber and Peyton. And so I reached out to both of you and I was like, we should do a menage collab. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, for whatever reason, Michael didn't join us for that one, but I was still really proud of how it uh, turned out. Um, yeah, just sent you a lot of like MIDI roll stuff. And then 
you know, the basic arrangement of it, a guitar solo, and then somewhere in that process I did vocals for it too, but then basically you actually turned it into a song, whereas it was just a complete demo before, so, yeah. I feel like you always sell yourself short on that kind of stuff. I, I, that with like, it was your arrangement that inspired a lot of the production on that. And, um, that's why it was so cool because most of the time when I collaborate with someone, it's like, you know, especially someone, a vocalist, it's like, I'm doing a bulk of the instrumentation and the arranging and stuff. And they're, they're throwing in their two cents, but this track was truly like, you had already done all the arrangement. Um, a lot of it was just like me producing it, producing what you had already done. And that was really fun for me. Now, fast forward to, um, you know, Valentine's Day of this year, and we released Blue Rosé, our single that we worked on together. And this song was kind of the opposite of that, where it was like, um, you know, I had actually started this song, and I don't know if you 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 knew this yet, but I, I had actually started that song last year. And it was, you know, I make so many creations and I just like, I keep making stuff and I keep going and then I'll go back and I'll listen through stuff. And I'm like, I, I, I really like this. And I'm just like, why didn't I do anything with this? So I actually worked on it some more and kind of brushed it up and got it up to snuff to where it, it is now today. And, um, I remember sending the track to you mm -hmm. and I wanted to like ask you, cause I don't think I've asked you this yet. Like what was going through your mind when I first sent that track to you, you're listening to the Google drive full file mm -hmm. and you're thinking like, okay, he just asked me to collaborate with yeah. him. You know, what's going on in your mind at that point? Well, I was fucking stoked first of all. And second of all, I was like, I God, I can hope, I hope I can figure a part out for this. Cause I'm starting to realize over time you can't just add vocals to anything and you have to pick your moments when you do it. And so I knew there was space in the song for vocals, but I just didn't want to step on your toes basically. Or yeah, I wanted to serve the song and not just like, yeah, shit all over it. <laughs> but Cause I, it sounded so breathtaking. I was like, what? I came up with the concept for Blue Rosé at some point, but I was like, what is this song about? And that's, at some point that came out, but it was kind of perfect because I was like, this is such a gorgeous song. It needs, like, to be kind of categorized as that with the concept and the title and everything. So anyway, that's kind of, not all of that was going through my head at that exact moment, but more or less, that's kind of what it was. Okay. So you kind of answered my next question and thinking about like what to add, but then like, you know, how does it differ? How does your process differ from when you're working solo on Darien Shields versus a collaboration? And also how does it differ from working in a band compared to working with a collaboration? So two-parter. It's almost like collabs and working in a band are different i feel like because i think a, there's a lot of people in bands who like don't even almost don't even think they're collaborating because they're just like playing a part to something else but it is a genuine collaboration obviously uh with like trying to do vaporwave collabs you're often doing it uh virtually and everything sending parts back and forth or what have you um so it's a lot more clearly defined who's adding what and uh you know, how much credit, who's getting, and that's usually pretty well defined. Um, but yeah, sorry, what was the other question, part of this question? <laughs> so like working solo yeah. versus working with a, a band and oh. then as it relates to a collaboration. That's yeah. right. Okay. So yeah, solo, you can just do whatever you want, especially with Darian Shields. It's all um, just whatever I want and oftentimes really just goofy shit that is pretty inconsequential uh with 
a lot of the other music I do, I try and take it a lot more seriously. And then when I'm working with other people, I really try and take it more seriously because I don't want to fuck with people's shit and just play jokes. So, yeah. So I was, I love that you came up with the idea of, um, or just the name Blue Rose. And um, when I think about like what inspired the song originally for me, was you know there's a huge chill wave influence um washed out played a huge part in that um but like i love that feeling of i don't know it's really hard to capture in music but like um like that in between feeling in life when you're you're not quite settled where you're at it's it's the perfect end of winter jam especially for a place like seattle where it's been gray for so long. It's cold. It's wet. It's rainy. We got like the tease of first spring where it was like sunny for a f- couple weeks. And then we're like, Oh yeah, winter's over. And then it's back, <laughs> you know? And it's like the perfect song for that kind of feeling where it's just like, can we just kind of push forward? But it's also reflective at the same time. And I feel like that's where I was at when I originally wrote the song is just like that capturing that feeling that um it's i i think it's called like sadade where that feeling of you know not being home or not being comfortable where you're at wanting to seek and find something else and also the, just like that like it's it's a melancholy feeling and i felt like you heard that very well in the song and you added on top of it it has that lush kind of beautiful feel to it but then it's also <laughs> yeah uh zavi the the spring of deception that's totally it it's like you feel like you're you're there already but then it's like nope winter has other plans so when you when you thought of like the title blue rose and you thought of these lyrics like what was the meaning behind that and because i felt like you captured it without me even telling you about it you just heard it and you knew well there was a so i listened to a shitload of podcasts and one of them it's this lady who reads old mysteries mystery novels and there's an old one called the trail of the serpent and there's a character in that book uh who they call monsieur blue rose and he's a fortune teller and the whole vibe of that book is like kind of victorian and dark and like brooding and i started thinking just about the name blue rose and i was like that is a like as you know a separated title uh as blue rose it's pretty cool. And then I was looking into the symbolism of blue roses and it's the pursuit of perfection because there are no true blue roses uh, that occur naturally. Um, and they basically haven't really done it. Um, and it's so this, it, the whole like not being at peace where you're at and constantly seeking, I almost feel like that fits with that too because it's this constant seeking of something that you may never achieve um and yeah like our recent discussions about music in general it it just kind of was resonating with me I think to be honest because yeah as a musician you do have this like constant questioning of like why am I doing this what is driving me to do this and yeah to try and make you know, the best song possible or like come up with the best part you've ever done or that kind of thing. That's like what keeps me going. And that's what I was trying to do for this song. So, yeah. Yeah. I think any musician listening to this can relate. I know I struggle with perfection in a lot of aspects of my life and that is not limited to just music either. So that, I mean, just hearing that, I haven't heard that um, from you before um, on this, on like explaining the song. And that's, you know, I struggle with perfection. And I think I said it right at the start of this. It's like the point of doing Infinite Stream now is not to be focused on the perfection of it. I mean, the stream could drop at any moment. This microphone could give out and it's the only one we have. You know, it's, it's, it's those sorts of things that it's like, you know what, screw it. Like, we'll just do it. And if, you know, and then just figure it out as we go, because that, that it builds confidence and it, it, it creates momentum. And that's what I love about like the purpose behind stuff instead of focusing on the perfection. So one last question, cause we are already at like eight ten. Um, this is flying, just being able to hang out and talk to you, but like, 
I, uh, one thing I really liked was being able to talk with you in person and being able to like do a collaboration live. And, um, it was, uh, it was something special for me because, uh, you know, like just the nature of the vaporwave community, internet music, it's online. I mean, it's in the name. So we actually got to sit down and finish Mm -hmm. like your vocals, do the last little bits of mixing. We got to like sit in the same room and work on stuff together, which was so special. So, uh, like what was like, what was that process like for you? And, uh, what do you feel like you learned? And maybe, um, I know I learned a lot, especially about vocal arrangement and stuff like that, but maybe just talk a little bit about that too. That was awesome. Indeed. Um, the first, the main thing I learned, I'll say, is just that I need to get a non-pirated version of Logic because at that point I could learn a lot more of what you're actually doing in the program because everything I see you do, I'm like, holy shit, I don't even think any of those plugins exist on this pirated version I have. So, uh, that'd be thing number one. It was just really awesome to watch somebody work who knows what they're doing in terms of mixing and mastering and stuff. I am constantly just doing guesswork on this. So to, yeah, kind of figure out uh, the vocal layers too, because I recorded probably like 20 of them. So we really sat through that together and like, you know, went through the nitty gritty of all that. And uh, I don't know. It's a lot better than doing it just over the web uh and trying to email each other or whatever like specific instructions for this kind of thing it's a rare privilege i feel like to be able to do that and uh not to put you on the spot but i got more shit if you want to do more of that kind of thing i got a couple more locked and loaded man we've no pressure at all like i love working on stuff with you it's so easy um I just, I, I love working on stuff with you. Uh, it's just, it's easy. Like we just kind of, we get along, we work well together. Um, so what do you say? Should we get into the, the song? Let's rock and roll. All right. We've been talking for a very long time. Time (laughs) really flies when you start yapping about this crap. So I'm going to switch over to logic now and, Oh, there's all my questions popped up on the notes. You guys didn't see that. I was just, we were just naturally talking about that. I wasn't like oh, reading yeah. off a notes or anything. Oh, yeah. um, so this is the logic session uh, for Blue Rose. And I just wanted to note, first of all, that this project was on my old MacBook, which was an Intel MacBook. And it is now running on uh, M1, which is the Apple uh, Silicon for the Mac mini. And I just want to say for anybody who's thinking about switching, um, you know, there are some things and some things that didn't work right away um, upon further inspection. But for the most part, it was a really easy transition. So if you're worried about it or you need to upgrade or something like that, just make the switch. I mean, it's going to happen sooner or later. Um, And if you're thinking about doing it, I would say just do it. I mean, I think I got this Mac Mini for like $700. I believe, and it runs better than my MacBook, my MacBook Pro that I bought um, a few years ago. That was much more than that, and it's it's frustrating that it it runs better even though it's like the bottom of the barrel Mac that they have now. <laughs> it just goes to show like how powerful those chips are. But if you are like thinking about making that switch, just know that a lot of the plugins did work. Um, there were a few exceptions that I needed to switch stuff over, but this is really um, uh, a testament to show that it, it did work really well right out of the box. So, um, anyways, so really in thinking about this song, um, the chord structure is, uh, I I think this song is in C if I were to put it in in a key, because it goes C F is kind of in the verse and then it's uh, D minor G and a minor. So I believe that's, that's C. Yeah, I think so. 
All right. Yeah. Um, I never really know. <laughs> it's like I kind of have an idea, but then by the time I like mangle these chords, so like if you look at the intro, I'll play I'll play these um, these chords right at the start of the song. So that is um, that is two chords. Uh, it looks like C and F, and the way I freaking mangle these chords, like I try and change the voicing as much as I can. But if you kind of look at this like step up thing, it creates like it creates movement in the chord to where it's. Uh, I heard this like in voicing and leading where it's like, it's you have the root notes, but then you also have kind of these these. <laughs> And I'm like, this is like garage um, uh, uh, music theory right now. But like things that go up ascending. and ascending, yes. It's like it has this ascending movement in the chords to where it kind of carries the chords along, even though it looks like two different chords. And maybe it is. I don't know. But um, yeah, it has this ascending motion in uh, the voicing to kind of pick it up and carry it along. And this is actually the M1 plugin. So I use the M1, uh, the CZV, um, and DX7V. So those are all um, arterial plugins. Dext, which is a free FM um, based uh, plugin. Serum, yeah, all that stuff. But what I love about these, and I'll solo these, is like these sounds so lush like i could not believe that this was an m1 when i went back through this because it sounds incredible and it's just swung a little bit left and then this one is swung a little bit right and i gotta say this is going to be the name of my next project uh this this preset is called night dad <laughs> all dads <laughs> yeah night dad i love that um if you don't have if you can't afford an a korg m1 i would say get the plugin because it's a digital synth anyways so the plugin sounds great to me it's easy to just dro drop in projects and stuff so um have a couple of m1 i think these are just presets both of them because I have no idea how to promote uh, uh, program a uh, M1. I just kind of use the presets and kind of tweak some of this stuff here and there. This one's called Warm and Fuzzy. So maybe this could be the name of the project. Warm and Fuzzy Night Dad. Yeah. So together they sound like this. Which sets that... It sets that tone. It's going from the major to the minor. It's the major minor. Na, 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 na. It's like creating that tension. Um, and uh, so we have the serum um, arps. So this is just like an arp of the same chord. And I think that one is just a, I think, yeah, it's just a square wave that I detuned um and with a filter cut off and i think this envelope is dropped on the filter so it's just creating a pluck and that makes it sound like this little guy here and on all these like on all my synths i i tend to add distortion or some kind of um saturation to them just to give it a little bit more grit make it sound it's like the imperfections in music make it sound so much better so i add a lot of like distortion and saturation and stuff like that so it'll like it creates the harmonics that you would find in analog gear but uh in uh the digital world because it's like the imperfections that really make music sound um great it like it tickles our ear for some reason we love the imperfections of it uh, the other thing on here, so this is mostly, if you look at all of this, all these synths on the top, this is all um, uh, digital or VST plugins. And then these like dark purple ones are analog synths, which what's crazy about this, so all of these synths here, I no longer have. So <laughs> these are kind of ghosts. Um, I ended up selling the MS-20 
uh, mini to fund purchasing a full size, which you can see up here. Um, and then the profit six I sold uh, and ended up using that money for, I think I just h hang on, or I hung on to it for a little bit and then ended up using it to get a super six, this UDO super six right here. Um, but these little, like, I wanted to make a comment about like the whole analogs versus like virtual versus um, digital debate. And really what it comes down to is whatever is inspiring for you. Like the digital technology is so good to the point where in a mix, you're not going to be able to hear a difference. And in a lot of cases, it's fooled people who are, um, consider themselves experts, uh, as to which one is the analog version versus which one is the plugin. So I can really only safely say that I love the Korg MS-20 because of its panel and its layout. So really with that, um, it's, it has a, like, it has this upright panel and it's semi-modular, so you can't really save the, the settings on it at all or anything like that. And it, it forces me to like stay in the moment and work with what I have in that moment. So I'm moving the cutoff uh, filter. I'm ch switching up the vibrato on the synth itself. Like I'm, I'm feeling and I'm like living in the moment for the song. And you can hear that in this. So this is some of those background sounds in, uh, in, in the song that really help carry it and add those little kind of movement and things in the background that really uh, carry the song itself. So here are some examples of that soloed. So it really is just like those little things you can do that on like VSTs and you can do that with plugins and stuff like that. But like in this context, it just adds that little bit of movement and it makes it feel natural and, and feel good. So I'm nerding out on sense hard and that's what I do. So, uh, in the context of the song, so let's listen to that intro. So something to mention on these hi-hats and these drums too, is when I have like a slow beat, I don't know if you do this too in your own production, but like when I have a slow beat, that's, I mean, this is 122 beats per minute, but a lot of it's just half time. Mm -hmm. So like, I really like to do fast hi-hats and like fast percussion behind a really slow beat to help kind of oh. carry it. So that's a really fast hi-hat pattern from, um, and this is just the drum kit set. I, this is, I probably changed some of this stuff on here, oh, but that's this- on there? Yeah, the drum kit designer. Oh, Ty, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I've been burping a lot. I was texting my lady to make sure she can't hear me burping over this microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want you burping on, on my I, mic, bro. I this know, is the I'm, only one I have. Not on the mic, but just, you know, in the background. <laughs> I got a little nerd in the background doing that. <laughs> yeah uh, so this the hi-hat pattern stuff I do a really fast hi-hat when I have a slow beat and here's the trick here is the trick to some crispy crispy hi-hats and this goes back to what I said about just like learning stuff on the internet you know the the house um, duo disclosure yes yeah yeah so that dude has a stream 
And like when I watch his streams, I'm just like amazed at what this guy does. But like one of the things he said is on all his tambourines to make it sound like the old 78s that he loves, he would add distortion on all his like really crispy percussion on the top. And it adds that it like adds that grit on it. So like with like without without this distortion, it sounds like this. Hear that like body, bruh. <laughs> the so, tricks, the yeah. tricks you learn. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like those little like like adding distortion. Of course, that's what makes it sound cool on like old records is it's being distorted, or like that's what makes it sound cool on analog gear because of the harmonics. You have sound that's physically traveling through cables into a console and then back out the console into a compressor and it's like all that's adding comp uh, like harmonics and color and all this like beautiful stuff that sounds natural and amazing to our ears but like in the digital world when it sounds like too precise and too like exact it's because there's no harmonics and no like stuff that's being added like distortion saturation um EQing I do like some stuff with phasers and tremolo where it's like floating around in space and stuff like that so it's like all those little things like really add a lot to the music um, that you don't necessarily get naturally just by doing it in the box like we do. So now we're getting to your part. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So um, I'm really excited because we're going to do some soloing, too, of your vocals. Um, Hell yeah. Wait, can we do the... the... Can we do the background vocals? <laughs> You, the probably, harm you probably don't even have those anymore yeah dude i just like i put them on a thumb drive and just like <laughs> threw them in the like into the ocean it's just like nah we don't need this anymore yeah. um uh but yeah so let's listen to this section with your vocals Man, first of all, I got to say that is probably my favorite verse. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. There we go. I got it. It was like ringing out some <laughs> reverb or something. Um, I got to say that's my, what, like, I think that's my favorite verse in the whole song. You started so strong with it. Um, maybe you could talk about like, it looks like you have some layers here. Um, I can get into the nitty gritty, gritty production stuff, but I just want to hear about like what it was like recording this stuff and like coming up with the lyrics and what is a composite versus these layers and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll keep it short and sweet, which is what I try to do with the vocals. Cause, uh, I think this song kind of stands on its own for the most part. Um, yeah, there's one little kind of verse there and then the chorus. And with the chorus, I really just tried to follow the um, melody of the chorus because I didn't want to lose that in the song. And like there wasn't I didn't feel like there was enough room on that to like do my own melody over that. So, yeah, I just kind of stuck with that. Um, yeah, for a lot of it, I was just trying to write as much flower themed stuff as possible but also spit some mad realness if you know what i'm saying no um anyway it's uh in terms of the treatment i did i try to do different angles different volumes different intensities uh because i really wanted to have options but also nail the song as much as possible i have a problem where it's like i never am sure about like my final takes and whether they're good enough for the song I that's kind of similar to how you approach production it sounds like I just 
I'm not sure I'm ever done with a song and it's yeah that's kind of frustrating so I I put in hours and hours uh per session to try and uh you know nail each part with a lot of what I sent you I sent you probably 20 or 20 plus tracks uh layers of vocals and a lot of that was like throwaway harmonies and stuff but I tried to layer them enough to mask a lot of mistakes especially on the choruses and it's just weird it's a little weird breaking into doing vocals for electronics be, uh, or electronic music because um it's all been for you know indie rock songs before this so it's a little different but um with the main vocal i tried to send you a composite of uh, what I thought were the best little segments of each line and put them all into one take and at least a take that sounded like it was all done in one take. Uh, the other layers I just kind of panned left and right and then decreased their volume at certain areas to reinforce everything that was already there. On the choruses I do tend to do this in my own music too. I just kind of like overloaded it. Um, and then turn the volume down on a lot of it to just get this really faint, uh, I don't know, Phil Spector, too soon joke, uh, wall of sound kind of deal. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> none of that made sense. But uh, yeah, there you go. No, that made perfect sense because it's it's exactly what I'm I was talking about with like saturation and distortion. You got to like overload it and then pull it back a little bit to add that little bit of grit and color, which is what we have open right now. So um, this is these are the plugins that were open on the bus uh, where I had all the vocals running into. So <clears throat> I use the uh, male vocals preset as the jumping off point, And then I would just kind of tweak. The, so. I guess what are we looking at here? This guy right here that I'm wiggling. This is the um, BX Console SSL 4000E, which is like a console emulator. So it's like like having a big desk. This would be one channel on a, one of those big desks in a studio. So it's like an expander, um, compressor. There's a filter, an EQ, um, and some gain, and just like little things that you can can kind of tweak here and there. Um, I also had uh, it run through some saturation, uh, vintage vintage verb, um, which is a Valhalla plugin, and then the stock pit, pitch correction, which just kind of dials stuff in a little bit if it's a little sharp or flat. Um, and all of that combined just really tightened it all up, made it like made it cohesive with all the other layers and stuff you had going on. And I found that when you run all the parts through a single bus and like it collects it all and runs it through all of this that it makes it all sound a little bit more cohesive so that was that and then we'll get into uh the d minor <laughs> g a minor portion of the song uh so that is this right here Yeah. So um, with this, uh, one of the things we had to move kind of out of the way for your vocals uh, was this little melody thing. And initially, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, I don't know. Like, you, you sang along with it. Um, and it's such a, like, it's, it's, it gets, it's so intrusive. <laughs> I don't know where you could have fit vocals in on this part of it. Can you play it with that really quick? Because I do miss that part. It's in there. 
It's a, yeah, you just bumped it down, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, dude. So, no, just like, here, yeah, listen to it with it together. All right. I just, yeah. That's why, that's what I wanted to avoid is like getting in the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, so that's what's kind of funny about this is like, I feel like the vocals should be the main part of the song. So like, as we were working on this, it's like, I got to get this out of the way. And that was honestly some of the feedback I got from people when I showed it. They were like, that synth is too distracting from the vocals. So what I did... <clears throat> to this was I added some tremolo and I added a phaser to kind of make it like just sit a little more swirly and swishy in the background. Mm -hmm. um, and that way your vocals with them stuck in the middle of the mix, you have this thing that's kind of like in the background, like going back and forth a little bit. So um, I thought it worked really well in the end. And the other thing too is during this section, I added some chorus to all these background vocals that you added. That was some of the feedback I got as they wanted, people wanted your vocals to get wider at this point during the chorus, um, which that's another thing. I keep talking about feedback from people and it's like, if you're, you should reach out to people and just send your songs. Well, first of all, ask them if they have time and don't just start blasting people, but like just reach out to people, say, hey, I'm working on a song. I like your music. It would mean a lot to me or, you know, like just be honest with them and what that would mean if they were to give you feedback on your song. Um, because that takes time. Like, I'd like, I feel like you, when you're DMing someone for me personally, I'm like, I'm reaching out to that person and I'm interjecting myself in their day. And like, I try to be as nice as possible and understand that they have a lot of stuff going on. You never know what's going on on the other side of those DMs. So when you reach out to someone, just know that you're reaching out to someone who could potentially have a lot going on. So just be as understanding as possible and just say like, hey, working on this song, it'd mean a lot. Is it okay if I send it to you? Because the thing that I think bothers me the most, I don't know if, <laughs> if this bothers you too, but it's like when someone just spams me an album and they're like, hey, listen to this, let me know what you think. And I'm just like, dude, come on. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm sure Alex is laughing at that right now. He's like, I run a label and I get that all the time, but sorry, you signed up for it, dude. You run a label. So sorry. <laughs> um, but like as an artist, it's like, I don't know if you're asking for feedback in particular. Yeah. But that, and that's what I do when a song is like 98% done. And I'm like, I think this is it. At, when I think like, I'm about ready to submit this on, you know, Lander or DistroKid or whatever on Bandcamp, Push Publish. When I'm about ready to do that, then I'll reach out to other people and see what they think. And that's what the overwhelming feedback was, was your vocals got lost on this point a little bit. The synth took a little bit too much. And I didn't want that at all. So I used it, I pushed it, I took that opportunity to push it in the background and have it kind of dance around and allow your vocals to really shine because what happens at the end of this chorus is so cool because it goes to the snap and then it drops. And this is the point when I, I don't know, there was something about this moment that I just loved in the song. Okay, talk about the oohs and ahs. Well, uh, we actually had a... This is part of what I mean. Initially, we were doing this all over the internet, and we had a round of notes at one point where I think you asked me for oohs and ahs, but I did it for the wrong part of the song. Um, so once I realized the actual right part of the song to do this, um, yeah, I just did as many layers as I could Beach Boys style over that um, little you know, post section of the first chorus. 
Um, and yeah, we still probably trimmed the fat on, yeah, 15 or 20 tracks or whatever, but we still are managing to have this like big choir effect or whatever at that one point. And yeah, man, I'm just glad any of this fits. I, I was trying actually like hell to write a second verse for this song, but I also, I'm the kind of songwriter who would rather say less than like write an obligatory verse or part for something. So yeah, that kind of just, just the oohs and ahs are really all that's needed, I think here personally, but yeah. And you bring up a good point because that's something I struck like a lot of my songs that when I started eventual infinity, they were like two and a half minutes long because I'm like, why would I make them any longer? Why would I add any more? Why would I try to add anything like that? And we really struggled with this part. Like we went back and forth. We were trying to figure out, should there be another verse here? Could I add more to it? Could we blah, blah, blah. And we settled on these, <laughs> these oohs and ahs. Uh, and uh, what's so cool about this section too is just that it's that Valhalla shimmer uh, reverb that just turns anything into a pad. And something like if we solo this, I I added some automation to the um, tremolo depth. So it creates this, again, wiggle kind of thing happening in stereo space, um, especially as the vocals head out in this section and I'll solo it right here. so cool i love that kind of stuff because it helps it disintegrate into the next section which it almost acts like a like i come from a dance music background like a riser or like a shh, 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 yeah. like a white noise kind of thing so it creates that as it and it's so subtle in the in the context of the mix but it sounds cool <laughs> And then we have the MS-20 solo, um, which is that synth that I will continue to gush on. Uh, but something I wanted to mention on uh, is this FM synth. Um, it's dexed, it's free. Um, it, you can actu it actually has all the DX7 plugins or um, presets on it, which is a famous FM synth from the 80s. And what's beautiful, and a trick I used I really started using it when I worked with uh, Fake Fever on uh, Mornings in Hawaii and some other tricks, uh, other tracks with vocalists because I love moving stuff back in space with reverb and just like a little bit of volume automation. So this twinkly pluck starts here. ends up way like in a cave <laughs> behind the whole mix and what i love about that is like i'll do the twinkly sound like right before the solo comes in or right before vocals come in and it's a psychoacoustic trick that your ears still hear it and it's still carrying the melody and the energy from that pluck but it's pushed into the background and it makes room for the solo So cool. And then from that solo, um, back into our favorite uh, D minor, G, A minor. What I love about that is you had the like bringing it home type. It was the bring it home chorus where it's like it's wrapping it up and um, 
How did you like change your, like the energy and vocal tone on that compared to the first course? Well, in terms of what we selected, I feel like we selected the best take of it. In terms of the energy in the room when I was recording, I was just trying to match. Because that cor- that second chorus really does come down a little bit. Um, and I was really trying to match the energy of that. Not just, you know, that slight melody change at the end, but yeah trying to wind down have like a soft landing if possible it's uh it's almost it's such a beautiful song i was kind of surprised it didn't have like a fade out or something like that because yeah to have like the kind of hard ending you do have it's a tricky uh tricky thing to pull off but that's that's what was going through my head there cool I say we listen to some of these backup takes that no, didn't oh, make it. Oh, yeah, if you could find them. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> so let's let's listen to some of these. Um, so this one. Um, <laughs> I love it because, like, I couldn't hit those notes, like even if I tried. But he, no, sh- no shit, everyone. So like, listen, like, why these are these takes are so important is because you're adding, and I. Maybe you should just explain it. Why, like, why do you add all these different takes and all these layers and all this stuff? I don't ever even know that they're gonna work, and usually, like, there's already plenty of like isolated just look up like your favorite singers isolated vocals they're a lot of times they're really bad they're not they don't sound good on their own so i don't know the idea with just doing all these layers is it is that wall of sound kind of thing um i have to my voice isn't like good on its own again it's one of those things it's just it only works when there's music behind it and it doesn't always even work then. So I have to like, I personally rely a lot on layering. Um, And the more, especially in the choruses, you do have a good amount of license to layer and make it like pretty harmonized and all that. So I just try and do octaves whenever possible. I try and hit the low octaves and the high octaves of whatever I'm doing Um, or come up with other harmony parts or yeah, just oohs and ahs or whatever, but part of putting your all into vocals for a song like this, for me at least, involves like recording as many takes as you can so that someone like you has options of what to mix versus, you know, if you have one or two good takes, but then you don't have anything to back it up with at all, um, I think you'd still you'd still be wanting for something. So I just wanted to send you an abundance versus like not enough stuff. So I was literally just trying to do whatever I could. (laughs) And a lot of it ended up very absurd like that. So, Which I love it because dude, it's so true. Like even, um, like (laughs) I see those videos on YouTube and I get pulled into them where it's like, listen to the isolated versions of Michael Jackson uh, and like all this stuff. And it's like uh, some producer reacting to um, uh, isolated tracks of your favorite, whoever pop star and out of context, they sound really weird. They do sound weird. And it's like, you can hear them like snapping like they're snapping along with it and you can hear them like shuffling in the vocal booth and like uh you can hear the 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 bleed from the headphones and like you can hear all that stuff when you listen to the isolated tracks and it's like people don't realize that stuff um and that's why these layers are important because that's what we were fiddling with when we hung out and worked on this live it was like trying to figure out which piece to bring up and which piece to bring bring down and stuff and some of these just didn't make the cut um but let's see what this one sounds like yeah, going to this next one just as bad. 
and one more. I won't make you suffer anymore, man. I think, uh... Let's see, one more. Oh, there's the notation. And it's just like sometimes, and I remember listening through on some of these where it was like, some of these worked. It's just like certain parts fell flat or something like yeah. that. And it was just like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just drop them. But if you look at it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> eleven layers of vocals What's that were. the stuff we didn't delete? Because I feel like we deleted more. I swear there was more. <laughs> yeah, there were tons. Yeah, there were straight up some that just like just completely got cut out. Oh, yeah, like all this stuff down here, I'm sure there was harmonies and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, so that is Blue Rosé. We are at an hour talking about a three and a half minute song. Um, and just talking, uh, more importantly, talking about like our friendship and how we met and how we became uh, friends and worked on music together. And I'm looking forward to working on more with you. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, just like closing. What What do you have coming up? What are you working on? Any future plans? I know you have a move coming up. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. Just, yeah, let the people know what's what's going on. Well, I have, I, ha I do have a move coming up, but I haven't really announced anything about it yet to le public uh but i am moving to portland oregon so yeah i'll be closer to you know earth boy advance and no x beats and all these kind of people so that'd be chill but uh yeah if you're a portland person hit me up uh west coast you know stay connected i appreciate that you're starting to do more of this kind of thing because then more people along the west coast will be connected in the scene and everything uh in terms of projects i just got my next album coming up i already sent out some sent some invites to people uh to work together and stuff uh after that i don't know what's next for darian shields i might take it in more of a just experimental do my own thing whatever right now i'm doing a run of 91 to 97 and this next album i'm doing will cap off 97 so I got to do a little soul searching to, you know, know what I'm doing next. But I do have a couple more jams if you'd want to work on some stuff or I might just like make them on my own and figure something out from there. But yeah, that's what I got going. How about you? Well, first of all, sorry to, uh, I, I doxed you, bro. <laughs> no, 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 dude. You didn't give out my address. Uh, yeah. We're good. No, <laughs> sorry. No addresses. We're good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just I I that's just something that's on my mind. I'm gonna miss having you in Seattle, but uh, it you'll you'll be close. It's still Northwest and West Coast. It'll be good. And yeah, anybody who's in Portland, hit this guy up. He's really cool. Uh, makes great music. Um, and um, yeah, Patch Notes is in Portland. So um, yeah, so there's a lot of great great talent in Portland, and I had, I think we've talked about some friends and stuff. Um, first time in the chat from viewer Soft Replica. Man, thank you, thank you so much for joining. Just tuned in, loved the discussion. Realizing that anything in isolation is going to sound awkward was huge for me. As far as not second guessing a take or in line when listening, yeah, it's as long as it sounds good in context and if it's breaking some rule you heard on like a mixing masterclass, it doesn't matter as long as it sounds good. I just want to say thank you so much, Soft Replica, for for joining us. Um, but uh, this has been fantastic. Um, yeah, dude, find us some venues in Portland. And uh, uh, Alex, I know we talked a lot about, um, you know, doing some shows in Seattle. That's looking like it's going to be a lot more comfortable very soon. Um, so, yeah, man, let's talk more about it. As far as what I have planned, um, I showcased some new songs coming on uh, my next album uh, on the Helio stream, uh, which I was very thankful that Ming did the vocals, or <laughs> vocals, did the visuals and um, set up that whole thing. That was my first stream since Be Careful stream. And then before that, it was the 100% Electronica big stream. So I've been doing them every few months, but um, 
there's going to be another short uh like less i think it's less than 10 minutes for um the the stream that Encarta uh put together and i'm really excited for that i saw alex you were doing that um and uh yeah i'm really excited to get my new music out that's what i've been working on the most um and i'm also going to be doing some reworks which i'm planning to do on the stream uh which is going to be awesome I'm really excited to um, kind of open up old projects and laugh with you about them because uh, so I've grown so much, uh, but also it's just kind of recognizing where they were at and where we can push them because I want to use some of the old songs from um, earlier in this project and rework them for the live setting. So that's going to be another thing. I've been reworking my live set as well. Um, but my main focus right now is finishing the album, wrapping up some co collaborations and getting back out there because dude, we were supposed to play a show. If you can believe it in March of 2020 yeah. and that's yeah. two years ago, which I is know. so crazy. Uh, so I'm excited to get back out and start playing more. I just know it's going to take, it's just going to take time. Um, and, uh, yeah. So with that, uh, do you have any um, socials or any links or, or any anything you want to promote or share before we wrap this sucker up? My Venmo. It, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, uh, I got pretty complicated names all over because I named my shit after an anime character. But I bet if you just search Tarion Shields, you know, on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, I may, I may pop up, uh, but yeah, thanks so much for having me, and uh, thanks for everybody tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, I loved working on this song with you, and I, I'm glad we got to show people this process because like, it's almost, I got to feel it's more fun to be making it than to just be some random person listening to it, Like, and I'm just glad we got to share that with people because I had so much fun doing that shit. Yeah, man. And it was cool that we got to do this. And thanks for being a part of my journey back to putting myself back out there again. Like this is my first stream in so long. Um, and it's just, it was a pleasure to work with you on this track. And um, I'm excited to work on more. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited to stream more because this helps me get better. It helps you guys get better. It helps build the community of producers. And I'm excited to speak with more people in the Northwest and the West coast. And, um, with that, I will say good night. Thank you for spending an hour with us on a Saturday night. Um, I know there's a lot of competing things and it means a lot that you're here spending time with us. And with that, I just want to say thank you again. I'm going to play Blue Rosé as we close it out. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time.